Earl Johnson of Moxie says there was just as much drama on the second Moxie album. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. In our last clip on our sister station, Rock History Music, we talked to Earl Johnson about that Tommy Bolin thing. It Some people call it the Tommy Bolin incident when his lead guitar parts were replaced from most of the album by Tommy Bolin. I asked Earl Johnson what the atmosphere was like going into Moxie 2. When Jack came in, uh, Jack Douglas, for uh, Moxie 2, again, you know, the second album, uh, you learn a lot from the first. It doesn't, it, it's that sophomore album thing that can happen. But what was your what was your vibe going into the second album for you personally? Uh, it wasn't good. We were not in a good place. Basically, after everything went down on the first album, I was, uh, okay, I had my back up all the time. Um, but then Buddy Kane was brought in as another guitar player, and I never wanted a second guitar player in the band. It was not my decision. Buddy was brought in by Buzz and Bill. He had played with Bill and Terry, so it was kind of like a gang up thing, to be honest with you. And uh, I wasn't communicating with the guys too much. I mean, there was a period after that first album, me and Buzz, I don't think, talked for like about six months, even though we were doing gigs. So, I mean, it was, it was, a, bad, it was a bad period of time. What happened was, I heard all of a sudden the second album came down to writing. It was, you know, probably half of Buzz, Buddy and Buzz's songs and half of mine. And it was two different bands. I listened to the record and said, it's two different bands, man. This is the joke. It's not one band anymore. It's two different bands. Uh, one guy's writing, you know, softer stuff, more poppy art kind of stuff, and I'm writing harder rock. Well, what makes sense about that? Nothing. I mean, the amazing thing was the first album was huge in Texas for us. The second album, they didn't even listen to it in Texas. Like, literally, didn't even listen to it. It came out, and it just went right under the carpet right away. They didn't play it. I was just talking to Jim Henman, you know, only playing on the first Save Wine album, but I said, "What? are you proud of that album? He says, let me tell you a little story. He says, that wasn't a cohesive band. He says, that's why that first album is, doesn't sound like Save Wine. He says, because we weren't a cohesive band, and people know they can feel that. Oh, yeah. You know, what happened was, manager that we had at the time and production company they wanted a hit they wanted a single you know i mean in those days hey if we had one hit single from that era i'd be playing festivals all summer like everybody else was doing right all he had to have was one big cross canada hit still didn't happen and uh you know there was a couple songs in there that really got kind of borderline mushy and i was like you know it wasn't my it wasn't my direction at all so there was a major ill will between, let's say, me and management and even part of the band as far as the direction of the band. By the time we got the third album, things kind of settled over. And uh, the third album was starting to get kind of, I was really happy with it because I thought it had, a, it was a more cohesive band and we had more of a direction as a band. You know, the songs rolled into each other better and had a harder edge to it. So, you know, anyway, second album to me, uh, I don't even play it. Yeah. You know, never play it. 40 Years and Still Rockin' is the latest Moxie album. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can pick it up and find out more about the band Moxie. Earl Johnson is still there. This is our new channel based on Canadian music. We have thousands and thousands of old Canadian interviews and new Canadian interviews that we want to share with you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, share our videos, and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. 